Closure, Scope, and Execution Context Challenge 5 once. So we'll begin by reviewing the instructions for the once function. All right, so uh, we'll write a function once that depends on or accepts a callback uh, as input and returns a function. So when this returned function is called the first time, uh, it should invoke the callback and return the output from the callback. Uh, if it's called any more times, instead of invoking the callback over again, uh, we'll remember the output of the callback from the first time and we'll output the value uh, from the first time that the callback had been invoked. Okay, so uh, we're going to start writing some pseudocode uh, for our function once, and this will help direct us when we start writing uh, our actual code out. Okay, so I'm going to start with some notes on uh, what this once function should do. And referring back to the, the challenge instructions, I see once should accept, once accepts a callback function and returns a function. All right, I'm going to give us a little bit more space to work with here. Okay. So let's go ahead and create our once, and it accepts a callback, so I'll name it cb for callback, uh, and we will write some pseudocode for what our once function should do. Okay, so we know we need to, let's, let's sort of start from the end and work, work backwards a bit. So we know we need to create a function that will end up returning, and the function that we want to create is going to behave exactly like this callback the first time that it's invoked. So the first time the function that we create is invoked, it'll behave exactly like this callback, but subsequently it's not going to invoke the callback again. It's going to remember its original return value and return that instead of invoking the callback all over again. So I'll name this function uh, onceified, uh, onceified callback. How about that? And then we know we'll need to return onceified callback. Okay, so we know that our onceified callback is going to need to remember information about if it's been invoked before or not. And this is a really good indicator that we might want to use uh, closed over variables to help us remember the, the history of our function calls. So one of the powerful things about, uh, about closures is that it gives us this persistent memory of, of the past or the history of our function calls. So if I create, if I created a variable um, here, um, create, variable has been called. If I create a variable called has been called right here, uh, if I modify it or make changes to it within my onceified callback function, uh, when I call the onceified callback function in the future, we'll see the changes that we made to it in the past. Okay, so there's a few things that we know this onceified callback function is going to need to remember or know. And the first thing is we're going to need to know has onceified callback been called previously? So I'll create a variable uh, and I'll name it has been called and it'll be a boolean that indicates have we already invoked or called uh, our onceified callback? And then I'm going to create another variable and this variable we'll use to track, okay, if we have invoked the, the callback or the onceified callback in the past, uh, we need to remember the output so that we can use it and return it uh, subse uh, on subsequent calls. So I'll create a variable and let's name this uh, cached result. And I don't know what data type cached result will be because I don't know. I don't know much about this callback function that's being passed into once. I don't know what this callback is going to return, but it doesn't matter so much for me 
as long as we know we can store it in this variable called cached result. Okay, so continuing with our pseudocode, um, I'm going to write out this onceified callback and we'll continue writing pseudocode for what this function should do in here. Okay, so the first things first, we need to figure out what onceified callback is going to be passed. And if you remember, we were talking about how we want onceified callback to work exactly like this callback the first time that it's invoked. So we want it to accept the same parameters, the same uh, arguments as this callback. But we don't know how many arguments this callback expects to take. So we need some way to be flexible about we don't know how many arguments we're going to be passed. So there's this really convenient syntactic construction in JavaScript called the rest operator that's going to allow us to handle this situation. Uh, so we'll write uh, dot 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 args. And what this is going to do is whenever we're writing a, a function definition, uh, uh, we can use this operator to say collect all of the arguments passed into the function and put them in a single array called, in this case, args. And I could name it anything. I could say my array of arguments, but that's a little long for my taste. So I'm naming this array simply args. Okay, so within this function body, if I refer to args, this will be an array of arguments passed into onceified callback. All right, so when we've called, when we've invoked onceified callback, the first thing I want to do is um, check, check if uh, onceified callback has already been invoked in the past. Uh, to see if it's been called. And we've created a variable, or we will create a variable, to track just this. So we will say, okay, if, if onceified callback hasn't been called, then we've got some work to do. Okay, what are some things we need to do if this is the first time we're invoking uh, onceified callback? Okay, well, first thing we need to do is we need to uh, invoke our, uh, the original callback and we want to pass it these arguments right here. So invoke callback with args. Uh, and we also need to store the output of this callback so that we can use it later. So we'll say invoke callback with args and store result. And we created a variable to store this result or at least we will. So we'll say and store result in cached result. All right, and after we've done this, we want on subsequent calls of onceified callback, we want to remember that we've already invoked this. So we'll say let's set has been called to true. Uh, okay, and if uh, once applied callback has already been called in the past, then we know that we've stored the result in this cached result. And if this is the first time we're invoking once applied callback, we've already gone through this if statement and we've stored the result we want in cached result. So down here we can just say let's return cached result. Okay, so this about does it for, uh, for our pseudocode here, and I think we're about ready to write our code. Okay, so first things first, we want to create a variable has been called, which is a boolean. So we'll say let has been called, and I'm going to initialize this to false to indicate that we have not yet called, uh, invoked our callback. And I'm going to add, I'm going to sort of subtly edit my pseudocode as we go to give 
helpful hints for anyone that might read this code in the future, uh, what these things do. So I'm going to say, okay, this indicates whether callback has been uh, invoked or called. All right, the next thing I want to do is create a variable cached result. So I'll say let cached result, and I'm not going to initialize it to any particular value because we haven't invoked our callback yet. So I'm going to let it remain undefined for now. Um, but I'm going to slightly edit our pseudocode to reflect this so, so our readers in the future know what's going on. Um, but I'll say stores a result of CB invocation. All right. Okay. And then we've created our function once a file callback, and we know eventually we're going to want to return that. And <laughs> the pseudocode down here uh, doubles as real code, so I can just uncomment it. Uh, and now let's work on the body of our once fide callback function. Okay, so first things first, let's check to see if once fide callback has not been called. So I'll say, okay, if, if we haven't called uh, our callback, so we're using this boolean variable has been called to keep track of this. So I'll say, okay, if has been called equals false. This is one way we could write this. Um, we could write it a little bit of a different way, which I, uh, I kind of prefer just because it's shorter. But I can say if exclamation point has been called, and this exclamation point is the not operator, it takes a boolean and it just flips it. So it says, okay, if has been called not. Okay, so if we have not yet called uh, our, our callback function, then we've got some things to do. So I'm going to cut and paste this pseudocode in here. Um, okay, and what do we have to do if we have not yet invoked our callback? Uh, well, first step, invoke callback. Okay, we can invoke callback. And we want, it to, we want to pass it the same arguments that we were given into our onceified callback. So, uh, I can use this operator, and it looks the same as the rest operator that we talked about earlier, but it's, it's called something different and it does something different. Um, uh, but I'll use the spread operator on args. So uh, what the spread operator does is it says, when I'm invoking a function, let's take an array and let's spread it out and pass the individual elements of the array as the arguments into this function. So the rest operator up here in a function definition says collect up all of the arguments passed and place them into one array called args. And the spread operator down here says when I'm invoking a function, let's take all of the things in this array and spread them out and pass them as individual arguments into this function. All right, so I'm invoking callback. And what do I want to do with the return value? I want to store it in the variable that we've made called cached result. Okay, and I definitely want to record the fact that we have now invoked our callback function. So I'm also going to set has been called to true. Okay, and I'm going to slightly alter, uh, alter our pseudocode. Um, so I'll say, okay, here, if CB hasn't been invoked, then store uh, uh, call CB and store result and uh, set has been Okay, and all we've got left to do is return our cached result. 
And I think we're looking pretty good now. Let's, uh, we've got some test cases, so let's test our code. Okay, so I'm gonna uncomment out our test cases. Run our code, we've got three sevens, so things are looking pretty good. We've got some extra test cases uh, for you down here. Say so check my answer, and I'm getting three check marks, so things are looking pretty good. Uh, let's do a little bit of review of how this is working. So, the first time, uh, let, let's talk about how we're using it down here. So we're saying, let's onceify this add to function. So we're creating this function, which adds two to a number, and we want to onceify this. And we're storing this onceified function in this variable called add by two once. Uh, so the first time we invoke add by two once, uh, we're going to say, okay, let's check to see if we've called this before. And in the closed over variable environment of add by two once, at first, we've initialized has been called to false. So we see, okay, we haven't called this yet, and we're going to run this if condition. So then we enter this if condition, we say, okay, let's invoke the callback. And the callback here is going to be this add to function that we've passed into once. So we call it, and we're gonna pass it in the number, ooh, what was it invoked with? The number five. So we pass in the number five, it returns out seven, and then we're storing seven under in the variable cached result. And then we're setting has been called to true. And because these variables live in the closed over variable environment of add by two once, when we invoke add by two once again, it will remember these updated versions of cached result and has been called. So then when we invoke this again on this line, we see if not has been called, oh, however, we've already invoked this, so we're not gonna run this line, and we'll skip right to this return statement that says, let's return the cached result. And the cached result we had saved as seven. So we'll return seven again on any subsequent calls. All right, that about wraps up our solution video. Uh, happy coding.